Satnam! Oh no, one voice! He's not sick. He's just a baseball player and he scooched way, scooched on out to go play ball. Let's root for him. Yay! <laughs> so, I love you. Wow, I cannot believe it. The last two days. <sighs> Mirror, mirror on the wall. Turns out I'm the guru after all. That really is the key. The goo and the roo. I love the way Alex says, you got to take the goo to the roo. And it's true. And they always are together. And that means that the darkness and the light, like the symbol of the Tao, right? Of the dark and light. And in the dark, there's a bit of light. And in the light, there's a bit of dark. And they are swirling together together not to hurt our feelings, not to scare us, but to love us, to heal us, to bring us exactly the experiences and circumstances that we need most. It's kind of like this, and this is so important, um, that our failures are intrinsically uh, connected to our success. It is the way you handle when when you, you know, put all your heart into a program and, and nobody shows up, when you um, put all this effort into the body and the body isn't responding, there is something that happens in that it's kind of the not getting what you want. How do you handle it? And I'm going to do a class on this. Um, actually, I did a class yesterday on Saturday, and I'm going to do it again on Tuesday, expanding it. But the, the idea in the Japji is it's, it's uh, spiritual maturity, right? So that looks like this. The childlike ego wants to have. And the higher self soul wants to be. The childlike ego wants to have and the soul wants to be. And so the difference is, I want to have a lover. I want to have a skinny body. I want to have more money. The child wants to have. It's outside of them. They want to have it. They think what's out there, having it will make me better. As we grow, as we chant, as we heal, we understand we must be. I have to be the woman that would be married to that man I'm attracting, I'm, I'm wanting to attract. I have to love my body and be so kind and delicious to myself to have the health and the weight and the energy I want. I have to feel empowered and, and um, successful in order for me to, to have the success in my business. I have to be it. I have to be it. And we get a little... Um, you know, behind the eight ball with that, like, oh my God, is it just delusional? No, it is, it is not cause and effect. It is causing the effect that makes life happen. It's us causing the effect and how we cause the effect to happen is we be it first. And this is, this is ingenious. This is so ingenious. Okay. It's not because like life is tricky or God is, you know, trying to make this game harder than it should be. Here's how it really is. Be honest. How many times have you wanted something only to get it and go, eh, that's not it. Especially the superficial ones, right? Where you did a quick buy on Amazon or you get a, you did a quick shove down your mouth or you did, watched too much on uh, Netflix only to know that that wasn't it. And not only was it not it, it may even give you a deficit in energy because you were because I was reaching too much outside of myself, right? So the universe is actually genius because it knows, hey, if you take some time to really love and get to know yourself and take that energy and that relationship to God and amplify your relationship with God and you start being the love of your life and you start being the dynamic health and you start being that successful, empowered person, you are going to feel you. You're going to tweak it into exactly, oh, no, 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 not quite like that, like a little more like this. You're going to actually have it inside of you before the energy and vibration of you has it show up on the outside. The outside is secondary. The inside is everything. 
So one of the things, I'll tell you this, one of the things it also does is it helps you be ready for when it happens. So when I was like really wanting to bring Tony into my life, I'm doing all this writing and I'm vibrating. The thing was the vibrating. I was vibrating in love with this man. I was him. I was her. I was it. I was with us in the bubble bath. I was with us uh, on the beach. We were together. I was it. Now, what did that do? It gave me some real information about my deficits and um, hardships when it came to relationships. So I could already start to handle that before the actual relationship began. So by the time Tony showed up in real time, I was already so used to being in love, used to that energy, and also onto some of my character defects that were going to rear its ugly head when it got triggered by actually being in relationship with the other, right? So I'd worked with the mirrors by myself. Now when the other starts mirroring back, some of it was wonderful. He's mirroring back, woohoo, all this work I did on myself. And he's going to mirror the wounds that I want to attract a mate to heal. Not because there is something wrong with Tony, but because any mate that was going to come into my life was all already destined to call up my insecurity and fears that have always sabotaged my life. Now, if I didn't understand that, when that started to happen, I would have thought something was wrong with my relationship with Tony. You get it? It's the same when I finally opened GDF. It, it, you know, sometimes I think it's hilarious. It's like, I, I left state fun because of a certain kind of energy. I left the soul of yoga because of a certain energy. And when I got to GDF, that certain kind of energy started appearing. Guess what? The certain kind of energy was me. I'm not actually easy to work with. <laughs> so I had to have the experience. Nothing's wrong with owning your own business, Marcia. GDF's a great idea, but here are some of the wounds that because you have finally stepped out in your own, the effect was great divine flow. And now this effect that you manifested from feeling it real time is going to call up parts of you that need to be healed once and for all. And then we're ready for the mirror. We're ready for the first mirror that 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 um, instigates real-time energy being mirrored back, good or bad. It instigates the second mirror, all the things I still judge in others that keep me from being connected to them. The third and the fourth mirror, all those things that have made me jealous and separate and all those things that have triggered addictions in my life. The fifth mirror, understanding that all of the relationships in my life have some degree of a mirror of God to me and they are reflected and deeply connected to my relationship with my mom and dad. And if that isn't healed, I'm going to suffer, right? And that sixth mirror, the ultimate mirror, the dark night of the soul, and all those mirrors work together and like kind of shine glimmers of my deepest fear so that I'll face it in this lifetime. And finally, God and my angels and my higher self are saying, and we're going to work, 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 work with you till you are living in the seventh mirror where you know life is in divine order. And the only time it's not is when you compare it to the moment before, when you prepare your present to your past, when you compare your beauty, your wealth, your business, your family to anybody else's, that's where the pain starts. If the comparison is gone, then I live in divine order and I have so much more energy because I feel so supported by my soul and God. That is what we did. That is the work we have done. I, um, I'm just amazed. So when we end this, we're going to go into some harder mantras. I'm going to really, in this teacher training that's coming up, we are going to really start to understand why these mantras do what they do. And we're going to get into the more intricate mantras because it's worth it, you guys. It's worth it. It's worth the effort because of what it does to your life. I'm getting God bumps right now. I mean, hands down the 25th and the 38th job G. And I tell you now I'm like, I want to be able to say the whole thing. I'm going to one day sit down and it'll take me 18 minutes, I think, to say the whole thing all together, but I will. And I'm passionate about it because I know Sanskrit, Hebrew, Aramaic, all those languages were protected languages held out by God and sent directly from the angelic realm to the earth. 
They have power that other languages don't, hands down. And when we are using the language of Gurmukhi, which means the mouth of the Guru, this is amazing, you guys. It is a Sanskrit language that was updated through God, through the vessel of Guru Nanak, only 500 years ago. So it took this protected language and basically what it made and did to it was it made it easier to work with and um, and released to the to the entire population of earth so that we would have it for the Aquarian age. The mantras we're using in this lineage is made to transition from Piscean to Aquarius. So I love you. I love you. Go to um, Mahanra Singh's class today. It's so important that we be together physically or on Zoom as much as we can and amplify our radiance and our light. Mm. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Holy Mother, I bow my head. I open my heart. As I bask in the sun, of this Virgo energy, today is all about receiving, receiving your love, receiving your wisdom and kindness and spreading it to the children of the world. There is this amazing grand earth trine that is happening today. And I know you are trying to work with me, Lord, in order to manifest, to feel my love, and to spread it to the children of the world. I know that you are creating the destiny and the life that I will learn and grow and elevate in. And I thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for everything. Amen. Sadnam. Sadnam.